Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is a Beko Condensing Tumble Dryer, DRCS 68W. Welcome back to part three of this series, I guess. I plugged it in, in part two, and or just before part two, and it immediately blew the fuse, the residual current device in the house, which suggests earth leakage, but could be positive or, or live neutral leakage. And the lights went out and it's night time. So I had a look at it, couldn't see anything obvious. In this video, I'm going to have a check through with the multimeter. I could try plugging it in again, but again, it's night time and I don't fancy running through the house trying to turn on and off switches on the fuse board. So let's get the multimeter out. So I've got the multimeter out and I've turned around to the side so you can see the power cable and where the power cable comes in. And down here is the mains voltage suppressor and then the power sets off into the machine to the on off switch, which is just in here. The machine was turned off when I plugged it in and the switch tripped just like that. If the switch was off, it can't really be anything beyond that switch. I presume it's a double double pole switch, so it turns off the live and the neutral. I presume in that. We'll check that now. But it shouldn't be anything else. So I'm guessing there's a fault on the cable. It might have gone away, which is always the mystery because it was a little bit wet yesterday. So let's go through it and suss out if we can find a fault. This is my multimeter. It's one of the cheapest ones you could possibly buy. I don't even know if I bought it. That's the level we're at. I might have uh, I might have found it somewhere in a box of stuff. You can get really fancy ones that do all of the different levels automatically, but this one is quite rudimentary. It does voltage on the AC, voltage on the DC, current on the DC, current uh, on AC, I think, is this one, the high, high current, and you have to plug it into a separate plug, tests diodes, and does resistance, and it tests little transistors as well, I think. Today we're interested in resistance, so let's set it anywhere on that scale, because all we're really interested in is continuity. When it says one, it's an open circuit. When I join the tips of the cables together, we're getting continuity. And in this case, very low resistance of one ohm, something like that. So let's put that there where you can see it. And we're only interested in it changing from one to something else. So we were getting a fault presumably to earth. So let's try neutral to earth. Nothing. That's good. It's a start. Live to earth. Nothing. Live to neutral. Nothing. That's a mystery so far. So let's bring it down and test the cable. Live on the plug to live on the main suppressor. Live on the plug to the other side of the main suppressor. We're getting continuity. We'll just try the neutral down there as well, just for funds. Nothing, nothing on the neutral. Let's check the neutral cable then. So it looks like it's coming down that way. It's going through the suppressor. And let's just check it across to the live down there. Nothing, nothing. Let's check the earth. The earth should come to the body of the machine, like here. And it does. It should also come to the earth cable, but it's it's just put back straight to the machine. So the suppressor is the other thing then that could have failed somehow. And it might not demonstrate the failure unless it's energized, which is the issue. So let's just put it across there. It's basically a capacitor as far as I can tell. And maybe a resistor across the live and neutral. I'm getting no continuity across that, which suggests it's not blown. So then, what's next on this journey? The main switch. So the main switch is at the front of the machine, and this is neutral I can expose first. So let's try neutral. To the neutral coming in. That's given continuity there, which is cool. It's not so much continuity that I'm worried about. It's something jumping across. Earth leakage, broken element, something like that. So we're getting nothing from live to neutral. And if I keep my connector there or my probe on the live and do go back to the live at the at this main suppressor, it's giving continuity there. Next up, the switch is off. So we shouldn't get anything from one side of the switch to the other. I could unscrew that switch to make my life easier, but it's a bit it's a bit of a tangle the way it is. Let's just try and deal with it in situ. Okay, so I've exposed the neutral side of the switch. And the switch is off, so we should get no continuity here. If I switch the switch on. We've got continuity. Likewise on the live side, the switch is on. So, let's see what I can do. It 
Looks like we're getting continuity there. And switch it off. Nothing. So it's very strange that that would have tripped the switch. And just for fun, let's just check across it. We're not getting anything across it. Turn it back on again. Not getting anything running astray. And it's unlikely that we would get these cables back on. Next stop appears to be this block here. It's got red, which I think comes from the live directly. No, red comes from the neutral and gray, which I suspect goes to some kind of a thermal fuse or something like that further down in the machine. That's a guess, but they have the thermal fuses. So let's start checking here as well. Are we getting power this far? Red should go to the neutral. Let's turn it on. And that's coming through. And gray should go to the live. And it does. So we should be getting power at the board. So that all seems in order. It could be a board issue. Let's just check for anything going between them. But it's unlikely. Highly unlikely, really. Nothing going between them. What I'm going to do next, though, is take a look at the element. The machine is tipped slightly forward. I've taken out what seemed like a million billion screws all around the back. And this should just lift off. But there might be a gasket under it. Yeah, it feels like there's a gasket in here. A few people suggested there could be an issue with the element, so that's why we're having a look as well. But also just because I'm interested to see. Kind of popped off there, but it does... Oh dear, okay. It does have a rubber gasket all around and a bit of a stainless steel heat shield thing on top there. There's a bit of snots there, but it shouldn't affect it particularly. You know, it's just, just fluff and it's not blocking it. So this is the element. It's actually quite a small unit compared to some of them, especially compared to Milan machines. Let's get that back on there to read resistance. And let's check these two guys up here. Thermal mini melt. One will be a thermal mini melt fuse, I presume. Possibly red. Don't know, actually. And the other one will be like a, a thermostat. So I'm getting continuity across the bottom one and the top one. And I'm just sticking this in to get a piece of the metal underneath. And I'm getting, ooh, am I getting it there? Yeah, we're, that's a bit strange. Let's pull this off. Let's pull off these little connectors if I can. They're looking a bit dirty there, but they're silvered brass probably. So I don't seem to be getting anything on that one. So red was one of those cables that we were just looking at up on the board, but we were getting power through it, which is quite bizarre. These little units are riveted onto this, which forms part of the element. So I'm not sure if you can replace them or if they want you to replace them. Still shouldn't cause it to trip the switch, however. It should just, if, if it's one of those, it should just either stop it coming on or stop it heating up. What I'm going to do while I have the back off is give it a bit of a vacuum to get this light fluff here off and to get any of this stuff out of there, if I can, and around here. But there's no sign of scorching. I've taken apart tumble dryers. You've seen them in some previous videos that are absolutely solid with fluff and it looks like it's been on fire. So this is relatively clean. Finally, at the back, let's have a look in under here. It's a little motor cover or pump cover. So this is the float switch. And when this reservoir here fills up with water, it pushes up on this switch. This switch is on a pump, a little tiny pump in here. And that pump pumps water up to the top, to the water drawer. You can prise off these two clips and get into that. It can get gunked up, but I'm not going to do that now. And there's the motor in there. And it's turning over as I pull that belt. There should be a capacitor for this. I think it's just in there behind those hoses. It is, and it's bolted onto the bottom. Can't really check that without swapping it out or putting in a new one, but I don't know if that would be the issue either. While I was in here, I thought it was a good idea to clean out the elements, so I pulled out this piece of mica. I presume it's mica. It's just slides in on one side, then you bend it very, very gently to pop it in or out. So I popped it out, and then I was just vacuuming here, and I noticed this element looks like it's in the wrong place. So it's just kind of hanging there and its end terminal has come off and it's just broken there in the back. So it should have a little hole soldered through to something on that side, clamping it across, joining it onto the other end of this one. 
but of course it's hanging loose and it doesn't and if it was to hang loose and touch the back there the metal oh no there's mica behind it so it couldn't touch the metal that's strange actually so i don't know that, i don't know if that would actually affect it then like it's kind of likely if it was if it was touching this metal but it's in it's within a mica box so the reality is that it can't really touch anything not sure why that would have broken i think it's here i can just feel it with my fingertip there's a little stub sticking out if it was touching this metal it would have arced straight away but i don't know that it was and it still doesn't explain it i'm pretty sure the machine was turned off so this might just be a red herring but also a fault uh drcs 68w i'm going to google how much an element costs if a feeling they're about 16 quid for some reason in my head which is more than i would want to pay so i might be able to affect a repair just using a tiny piece of metal <laughs> just push through other than that this element's quite clean there's a little bit of stuff there but not a big deal I, I suspect it has two sets of elements high and low so it has all four on together or two on to give a high and low heat for synthetics versus cottons yeah problems as we find them right other than that quite a clean machine i don't know what this rust at the bottom was other than probably condensate water left dripping there in a environment that was continue or continued to be damp maybe that's the back of the condenser box there so the water would be coming through and then getting heated up and then going through the clothes and coming back no cold air would be coming th through actually i don't know what i don't know what way the path is okay let me know what you think if you enjoyed the video give us a like so consider subscribing to the channel if that's your thing and leave us a comment below if you've got anything to say or you think i should do anything to this machine other than set it on fire or throw a brick at it i'd like to get it going i'm going to plug it in tomorrow in the next video again and see what happens with all the covers off probably because that's how i'm feeling when the daylight comes out thanks for watching see you later